Hello, I'm Dr. Thomas Vierney. I'm a psychiatrist. I'm author of uh, The Secret Life of the Unborn Child, which has been now translated into 27 languages and uh, five or six other books, mostly uh, dealing with pre and perinatal psychology. So you may very well ask me, what is pre and perinatal psychology? And pre and perinatal psychology is a relatively new science. I've spent the last 30 years developing it, uh, working with other like-minded scientists to come to understand um, better than we ever have before early human development. And um, pre- and perinatal psychology uh, attempts to explore and to elucidate uh, all aspects of early human development, which would include, of course, um, genetics and, um, and early human development based on neurobiology and psychology. And in that sense, it is a theory and a practice that is unified, holistic, longitudinal, and contextual. And what all of that means really is that um, today, better than ever before, we understand that everything that the pregnant mother eats, drinks, inhales, um, the experiences she has, the stress that she is exposed to, even her feelings and her thoughts can, in small ways and sometimes in large ways, large ways depending on the circumstances, influence the development of the unborn child. And here I'm really serious when I say development because every moment of that child's life in utero is being influenced by the what, what the mother experiences. Uh, so uh, let me tell you a little bit about some of the sort of foundational concepts of pre- and perinatal psychology. And um, the very first one is that life is a continuum. And in, in, in the past, people believed that uh, life began at birth. And of course, nothing could be further from the truth. Um, life begins at conception, way, way before birth. In fact, about nine months before birth. And so um, it is very, very important to understand uh, that life is not sort of like a life switch that you turn on when a baby is born. That baby has had many, many experiences way before uh, it first comes into the outside world from, from the womb. And so uh, the second most important concept is that there is really no separation between the mind and the body and that really there is a mind-body entity and that this concept in the case of a pregnant woman can be extended to include her unborn baby so that everything that she experiences is experienced by the unborn child and also very often things that the unborn child experiences is then in, in uh, uh, many different ways, uh, particularly through hormones, uh, messenger hormones, and the blood system is being fed back into the mother's body. So um, this, again, is the second most important concept in terms of pre- and perinatal psychology. Uh, certainly how humans develop and learn uh, depends on the dynamic interplay between nature and nurture. In other words, between the genes that a person is conceived by and all the experiences that that person is exposed to uh, during those nine months and, of course, uh, the months and years following birth. So it's a dynamic interaction. It's not one or the other. Genes are not any more important uh, than nature and the environment. And anybody who tells you differently, anybody who says that, you know, it's 55% genetics and 45% environment, uh, they really don't know what they're talking about uh, because we simply don't know. What we do know is that it is um, an interaction. 
it is a dynamic interaction between uh, nature and nurture and we result um, as, as a result of, of, of that. We are who we are, we become who we become as a result of those interactions. And my fourth point is that the brain is sensitive to experience throughout life, but experience during the critical periods of prenatal and early postnatal life organizes the brain. And uh, Bruce Perry, uh, one, um, one of the leading um, neurobiologists and scientists in the United States, has put it, I think, very beautifully when he said, experience is the chief architect of the brain. Experience is the chief architect of the brain.